So we are going to go right into our uh, budget workshop. We did get uh, this afternoon uh, updated, updated budget from Dorinda. Hopefully all of you have that. Um, it is the one where the bottom line is the magic number is 137. One million three hundred seventy-eight thousand two seventy-three, which is a four point one one percent increase. Yeah. And that budget, I'll I'll let you, Dorinda, give us the quick uh, review of the updates you've made since the last time. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're muted, Dorinda. We can't hear you. Uh oh. Our lips are moving, but we're not hearing anything. Yeah. Tell her to sign back on and off. Sometimes that helps. I'll text. Dorinda, if you can hear us, get off and sign back in. Okay, thank you. Salaries. <laughs> audio. Still can't hear you. Maybe she has to press that button at the top. That with a well, it microphone. doesn't show that doesn't show that she's muted. Can you see anything, Sarah, from your end? No, she looks good here. That's you true. You can be muted by your computer, not by Zoom. <coughs> right. If she hits the. <coughs> yeah, she's, now she's muted. muted. No, but on her computer. Dorinda, if you go to the top, there you can unmute. Okay, so she did that, and now yeah. she's, no, she's doing that, but we can't hear. Her. There she is. No, am I back? You're yes, back. You're back. Okay, well I muted it and unmuted it, so I guess that worked. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, so the minor changes were we had gotten confirmations on like few of the organizations that we were still waiting to hear from like the court, Washington County Court and that. The other changes that were made were within the payroll and the benefits. Um, we made some adjustments there. Um, and then there were a couple of insurance changes that came through. So um, for business insurance. Um, so those were really the highlights. There wasn't anything really major other than um, there was a significant savings on the health insurance. Good, we can use it. So Dorinda, how much did you put in for the increase for the payroll? It's all, it's all based at 2%. 2%? Mm-hmm. And 50K for the um, new position? Yeah, it came out. I think I, I thought I had sent everybody the updated thing. Um, what I basically did was I booked um, 28 hours a week for the bookkeeper and um, it came out to a base pay of 47,000. By the time you put in taxes and all, it came out to 51,755. Other questions? <clears throat> Victor, you said you had a couple of questions? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I just was looking for clarity on the highway budget uh, under uh, um, 
winter sand, you show that as a it was thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, I guess you'd call it twenty twenty-one, and then you have a figure in there for screening at twenty-one thousand. You have a savings of uh, some percentage, and then the same thing on the trucking. But with that winter stand, there's no there's no value. Or when do you put a value in there for establishing the pit? I mean, you worked quite a while this spring on that, and you had hired help. And I mean, how? I mean, you won't have a uh, a savings. I know you said four or five years you figured to get the sand out, but I mean, is there any place that you put an accounting in for for establishing that? We took it out of some budget items, Vic, but uh, we didn't, uh, I don't have an ongoing thing for that. There will be a savings in there. There won't be this year because of the money we spent establishing that. Oh, right, you're saying like four or five years, maybe you should have four or five years, I understand that. But how do you know if there's ever gonna be a savings if you don't know how much it costs you to establish pit? We do know how much we spent. Is there accounting of that somewhere? Um, uh, that's what I've never, I've never seen anything on it. But I, I see what you're saying and no, that's not all written in one place. Like this is how much it cost us to do that. I can go back and get those figures from everything we've done. I mean, I don't, yeah, that would. Uh, I can do that for you. Okay. The right. answer, the answer Vic is we did not we did not capitalize it. Like we did not say we created $120,000 worth of value. We believe we did, but- We're going to with our capital budget this year. There That'll you go. be put in there. That there sand pit will be put in there. But it's, not in, but it's not in these numbers. It's there, but it's not in these numbers. But we can certainly get you what the cost of opening the pit was. Right. Or establishing. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. And then um, the other question I had is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, maybe that's what you need uh, or what the uh, town needs. Uh, um, last year, you had that line item there for $40,000 for uh, uh, an excavator, trucks, uh, an operator. Right. Pitching. And I know you put that out there uh, and uh, uh, and said uh, that you hadn't used it yet. But I was under the impression last year at town meeting that that was a one-time thing, but yet we're going back and doing it again this year, even though we didn't use it, it just- Well, <clears throat> there's, some different, there's some different things in there. We're not doing it exactly like that, but I am gonna be using, or we will be using, uh, at least a portion of that money that was allocated last year and yeah. doing exactly what we were going to do. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to do it like at the end of June and into the 1st of July so that we have our next fiscal year uh, and doing a little bit more of that ditching. Yeah. So, and then, uh, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, that's logical to me. And uh, But so, but you, uh, you feel that, uh, uh, I think it was said last year at town meeting that it was a catch up thing. So you, you, in other words, you want another 32,500 to catch up some more. Um, no, that's not all that. Let me, uh, and I don't have all that, those figures right in front of me, Vic. Okay. I guess I need to, I can get that folder and, and go over that whole thing with you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So, hey, Peter, while we're like, this is Randy, yep. just while we're on that whole topic, I'm wondering if uh, if the up to date budget that was put together is available to, to the general public and where I would need to go to, to look at what's included in all of this at this point. The answer is we can send it to you. Okay. I believe we can. Dorinda, can you send it to him? Yep. Thank you. Do you have Do you have his email? Um, I believe so. Okay. 
Yes, we can send it to you. We will Thank send you. it to you right now. So I really don't think, unless somebody wants to, that it's <coughs> worthwhile at this point in time to go line by line through this budget. I think the big, uh, potentially the big gorilla for tonight is, if there is one, is if we're comfortable with the 2% wage increase and are we comfortable uh, with the money we have allocated for a financial person, which is built into that, uh, that wages, uh, that wages line item also. Um, Where did I think, Where you know, for me, the answer on the financial person is as yet undetermined because we don't, we have, I guess, Dorinda, correct, gotten in a couple of, uh, a couple of resumes, uh, but we are nowhere near ready to hire anybody. So we don't know, we don't know whether that's a realistic number or if it's way high. I hope it, I hope it is not way low. The good news is we'll know, we will know the answer to that question by the time we set our, set our tax rate in July. So we can make an adjustment that way if we, if we save some money in that, in that line item. Peter, what about that $25,000 that we just got that thing this afternoon? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's on my hit parade also. I, I did want to talk about uh, one yeah. other, one other item on, on wages before, uh, before we deal with the, uh, with the listers email. Um, I have been trying to carefully look at you know where we are overall on wages where we are with the road crew where we are with the office people where we are with where we are with everybody and the one thing that keeps keeps popping up to me is that one of our most important people and I'm talking about Sarah, who of course is on this call, which makes the conversation a little awkward, but it is what it is. Um, you know, to me appears to be on the on the skinny side of the of the pay situation, and I don't know what we uh, what we do about that, or what we think about, or if other people if other people feel uh, feel the way I do. Dorinda, if you could just tell us tell us where that rate is now, please? Currently it's 25.97. 25.97 an hour, which amounts to how much money total? Uh, well, I'd have to go back and I don't have the total annual in front of me. I'd have to do the math because it's split out between two different departments and- Correct. I think if we look at last year's book, wait a minute. It, you got the select board system is 22,463. Right. Um, I'm just looking. And town clerk is one. There's 21. Right. right. That's, with the, that's with the 2% increase in there, though, that you're looking at, right? That is yeah, correct. So Right. That's right. so that's not with the two percent increase, it would bring it at twenty six forty nine an hour. And that's the totals that you're looking at. I thought you were looking for car. Oh yes, right. Yeah. I was Is that thirty two hours a week? Yes. I mean technically we know she probably does more than that. So I don't know I don't know how people uh how you feel about that. I did, I did do some work uh, last summer uh, looking at this and I believe I determined and Sarah, if I'm wrong, tell me, but from the numbers I could, I could see and I could find out uh, for the 
and and it's it's very difficult to compare to other towns what uh, what we pay versus what they <laughs> pay because of course you know some are clerk treasurers some are clerks and select board assistants there it's it's all over the place but uh, it does appear for for full time four days a week. Uh, we're on the low side and that that hourly rate is on the low side compared to what others are, what others are paying. How much lower on average? It's all over the place, Mary, but I was, I was thinking, I was thinking of, of proposing a, uh, a, uh, a dollar an hour increase for both those positions for the, in addition to the 2%. If you do it, if you do a dollar an hour without the 2%, it's like a, uh, a 50 cent is roughly the 2% increase. And uh, then we'd be doing another 50% or another 50 cents, excuse me. Yeah. Roughly. But I was thinking, I was thinking the 2% plus a dollar. I mean, with a lot of help from other people, she's the glue that, that holds our town mm -hmm. together. And I'm not ashamed to say that in front of her. I'm nope. so bringing it to 2749. I'm sorry. Do you mean bringing it to 2749 an hour? 2% plus a dollar, yes. So not a dollar plus 2%. Right. If you do the dollar right. first and then the 2%, it changes that a little bit. It's a little more. So the so the total the total yeah. cost of the dollar would be roughly $38 a week times 52 weeks just to do it by my slime dog way of thinking. So it isn't, it isn't in the big ebb and flow of things, a lot of money more than anything else. I think it's, it's making a statement to her about how much we appreciate her and, and value the work she does for us. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. <laughs> That would bring it to twenty-seven fifty-one an hour. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Any other yeah. thoughts yeah. about that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. That's very nice of you. Well, thank you. Your thank you. efforts You're more welcome. than more than yeah, whatever. And I I wouldn't say that's that's enough either. Hopefully that's a step in the right direction. Um, so then to deal with the uh, bombshell, I got to get the right piece of paper in front of me. Uh, we got that email uh, from the listers literally at the last meeting, at the last minute before this meeting. I know. <laughs> saying now, and I, I am confused. So, so Amy was Amy and Sarah were, were on the Zoom when I first came on before anyone else came on and I asked Amy this question and I got a very confusing, a very confusing answer because my memory is when the listers presented their budget, they said that the cost of this software would not be in next year's budget, meaning the budget we're considering now, but the following year. And she is saying no, that they all along expected to have this cost in there, but yet they didn't put anything in their budget request to even an estimate of what this would be. They just hit us at the last minute with a with a bombshell and none of them are available this evening to talk to us. The evening we're trying to finalize our budget. So, A, I don't understand my misunderstanding. I'd be curious to know what what other people remember of what was said. I know that was almost two months ago. My notes agree uh, with you. I had no in. idea. I had no idea that there was a chance that we were gonna have a $25,000 additional request from the listers. And I do understand, and I don't have this year's uh, budget update, but my memory is from when I, when I looked at it last that there's a significant savings like 12 or $14,000 in what we budgeted this year for wages uh, versus what the wages are gonna be. So her point was that's gonna pay, pay a portion of that, but 
that doesn't help us with our budget. I mean, our fund balance may go up a little bit if, we, if we're lucky enough to end up at the end of the year not spending that money somewhere else. But that's a big chunk of money to get presented with at the absolute last minute. So I'm looking for my listers. On what page is that on? Or, okay. the very, it, all it, they don't have a budget itself. It's just lister wages. Elias said his notes were the same as yours, Peter. All right. So yeah, they said it'd be I'm, next a little, year, no. I'm a little, and I'm trying That's to be polite. Thought. I'm a little miffed at our at our listers because if they knew this was coming, why didn't they why didn't they tell us? And she acted tonight like, well, you know, this is beyond our control. Well, I don't think it's beyond their control. They knew they knew it was coming. I understand they got the final number at the last minute. But to hit us with $25,000 15 minutes before our meeting begins, I think is a little tough, maybe more than a little tough. And I'm a little upset that, uh, that they don't think it's important enough that they can come and talk to us about it. They don't have, do they have to have that software? Yes. That's what they say, I mean, I read, I read the email. All I know is yeah. what I read in the email. Amy really well, wouldn't tell me anything else. She just confused me. She didn't help me. Can I speak? They say in the thing it says it has to be implemented by July of 2022. Right. My, but in her letter, it says she's only asking for 15 because she plans on using the balance out of this year's budget if they sign the contract before June 30th of the current year, they will have that money left over. Because right now they're only at, um, they're at a very low portion. They aren't anywhere near what they budgeted for this year. Oh no, I understand, I understand that. Okay. So yes, I understand. I understand that they hope to sign the contract by the end of this year that we're in and spend that extra money there. So all, they're, all we're increasing next year's budget is 15,000, correct? Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. No, yeah. no, no. You're, you're, Right. I mean, you're reading the letter the same way I am. But I guess the bottom line is. We have to do it. We have to do it, I think. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is about the way the listers operate, but <laughs> it doesn't make me very happy. The only comment I made to her was it's a hell of a way to run a railroad. And I tried not to say it in a snarky way. But anyway. <laughs> It's well, about a one percent increase. Are on top. we anticipating the first payment being made in this budget year, or is that that's something? what she's saying in her email, Mary? But you, you know, know, but I didn't I'm, have a chance to really okay. talk to her or confirm that. Well, I mean, she wants to add fifteen to next year, mm -hmm. but I think she's expecting us to to have the other money available in this fiscal year. Well, they're hoping. My understanding is they're hoping to sign the contract this year and use the balance that's in this year's budget as a down payment, or I don't know, I don't know how they think they're going to work it. I mean, we have to be, you know, I can tell you, and, and Dorinda will tell you also, we sign a contract for $25,000 this year, our auditor is going to put it all into this year, whether we pay it or not. Cool. Right, Dorinda? Well, you're, you can, um, I don't think the whole expense will go in. If we're only expensing 50% of it this year, I don't think the whole expense will sh all show in this year because I believe the way the contract reads is it would be 50% down and 50% balance. Oh, okay. Well, that, that makes it a little better then. I think that's how it works. I okay. Don't hold me to it, but I think that's what it is. Okay. Well, there's, there's two different... Um, things going on, right? There's the software license, and then there's the cost of having all of the land records entered into the new system. Is that correct? correct. They're, they're asking for the full conversion where right. that all gets entered. They don't have to sit. I mean, her, and, and again, all, all I've got is okay. this. Is this yeah. piece of paper? I gotcha. didn't have a chance to ask any questions. Nobody had any time to talk to me. Uh, it's a little frustrating, but they're recommending that we go with a 25,000 version because we'll save in wages 
the cost of updating those records, yes. Yeah. So Dorinda, if you plug in, so- 15. So, well, so, the, so there's the other question. If she's thinking there's fourteen thousand dollars to spend from this year's budget, then all of a sudden she's up to thirty thousand, not twenty-five thousand. No, she's planning on using ten out of this year's leftover money and fifteen from us into the next year's budget. Is that what it says in there, Steve? I missed that. Yeah, it's, I think so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that makes sense. But well, now, Sorry. what does that make our budget? What it makes it a 5.39% increase. How much is the school this year? Beats the heck out of me. Who knows? Can <laughs> um, I ask a question from the budget committee? What, what would happen if you put off this purchase until a year from now? Well, I don't, th I mean, and again, <laughs> I, I was trying to ask her those questions because that's when I thought it was going to happen. That was my understanding of what we were told before. And she just had no, no good answer for that, Sarah. Did you, did you understand anything any different than what I understood from that short conversation? I did not. And I did send the listers the agenda and the Zoom information so they could participate in this meeting and they are not. So it's not right, like- she told, us, she told us that they couldn't. I asked her that. Um, mm. So uh, I don't I don't understand it that well at all. It seems to me as though um, I don't know. I try to get. I, I also don't understand if we are if we had allocated money for Nemrix camera, then ha, is that offsetting this cost since we won't be using the Nemrix ver software? But I couldn't get an answer on that. Oh yeah. I thought that yeah. was in, wasn't that in the letter as well? How it would offset it? I thought. I thought I saw something. She mentioned something about the Memrix camera. Camera. Well, I don't see that anywhere. You don't. Know? Yeah, I didn't see that either. I, I mean, I think you're right. Somewhere down the road, maybe oh, yeah. not initially. It's the last sentence. Um, it's the last sentence. We will negotiate. It is. Yep. Somebody read it. I can't. I don't have it right in front of me. It says. We will we will negotiate to reduce the cost of the annual software maintenance since we will have three users at most and to have the support and maintenance costs deferred for a few months. Moreover, together with the cloud hosting costs, these ongoing support and maintenance costs will be offset, will be offset the annual fees we are currently paying NEMREC and are already in the FY2 2022 budget. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like mumbo jumbo to me. I'm yeah, sorry. I well, would think that any words. <laughs> I would think that the yeah. NEMREC has to be continued for a period of time while the conversion is happening. You're going to have to run parallel systems. And um, I mean, George had asked, what if we put it off a year, which I, you know, is, was one of the first things I thought about too. But if if the state is moving to this system, we have to be a part of that um, to be able to generate tax bills to, you know, uh, for the grand list and all of that. So this is one of those cases where I, I don't think we've got a lot of choice. I'd like to see the state actually become proactive. If you're going to do something like this and tell everybody you have to participate, then the state ought to just pay for it and give us a, 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 a username and a login and we all use it. I mean, we're paying for taxes one way or another. They should be able to negotiate a hell of a deal as opposed to each of us doing this town by town by town by town. So, but, you know, I've been down that road before and don't ever get anywhere. So, but anyway, I don't, I just don't see where we've got a, a, a choice or a, a, a really a path toward deferring the cost because we've got to we we've got to get all those land records in there and be up to speed when the state goes live so yeah, yeah. well this would be my thing guys unfortunately and i hate this but 
I think we put it in the budget just the way they requested it. And that doesn't mean we spend the money that way. That doesn't mean we follow that plan. We, we've got some questions that need to be answered before we go ahead with this and authorize them to, uh, to sign that contract. So if it's in yeah, the budget, absolutely. we don't spend it, we don't spend it. Yeah. I don't know. Can I just ask going. a question? I, what yes. did you put in, um, Dorinda, did you put in 25K or 15K? I put in 15. Yeah, okay. And that made it up to, that brought it up to 5%. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's 5% because we also just changed wages. So that's, yeah. Wait, so you've already added it to this budget. Not the one that you got. I'm adding it as you guys talk. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Is that going to be a separate line item or where are you going to put it? Uh, I will create a separate line item for it. But right now I just put it in under computer maintenance. Yeah. This is fun, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So right I might have now, to have a cocktail if we do this for too much longer. Yes, Randy. So uh, Phil was mentioning, you know, running parallel systems. Anytime you're trans you're transposing information over to a new system. You've obviously got to run the two systems side by side. Hearing the conversation here, I would be worried that the numbers actually match up to what they're asking for and what we're putting in the budget. Because if they're counting on savings from the existing system to buy down the cost of that $25,000 contract, I don't, I don't believe that that's going to be the case. I don't think that was the case, yes, Randy. Yeah. I think they were counting on that uh, offsetting their their uh, annual maintenance costs, right? On the road, mm -hmm. and not necessarily anything to do with that twenty five thousand. But I think that the point is well taken that we might have double maintenance costs for some period of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with Randy. Sure, Ron, yes. Yep. And I don't know how we account for those other because they haven't given us any indication of what they're going to be. Well, we've got some we've got some work to do between now and now and June, and I don't know what our uh, our authority is to tell them how they do this. You know, this is this is where we run into that question of can we tell them how to do it, or do they tell us how they're going to do it? You know. Why do you say that, Peter? What? Because we don't have They're the authority elected. to directly supervise them, I don't believe. No. You know, they present their they present their budget and we we approve it or we don't and they 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 do their own I mean it's it's uh, that's the way it, that's the way it works unfortunately, so it's a little difficult. I mean, and I would tell you uh, trying to and I'm not going in any personalities here, but let, let's put it this way. They're difficult to deal with, difficult to talk to, different to, difficult to get straight answers, difficult, so. Being recorded. I know, that's why I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you, Peter, that we've, you know, we've got a lot of things to figure out about this, but I think for now, you know, putting in the 15 and, you know, it's there for right now. It's a placeholder. We try to get as much information as we can before decisions are actually made, um, you know, about what we're going to do. But I agree with you. I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot of latitude that we have. They're, they're elected on their own, uh, not appointed by us. And they are charged with a certain task and they're saying that's what they need for money to do it. So I you think know, we go forward. So yep. I think we're I think we're beating a dead horse. I think we yep. I think we put it in there. Um, I was hoping to keep I was hoping to keep this under five percent, but yep. I can live I can live with a five point one. I can defend it. Five point three nine. Okay. Okay. Well, so I can live with a five point three nine, Dorinda. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe we I can. Can't, I can't round that down to five. If you Is want there... to start cutting somewhere, I'm just teasing you. Yeah, we should. What's the What's the number, Dorinda? It is one three nine 
5238. It's peanuts compared to the school budget. <laughs> Not that that has anything to do with anything. Well, we, you know, when we, this budget reflects the fact that we took all the numbers that were submitted and we were supposed to spend this session going over and cutting what we thought might be excessive. So, um, what would you like to cut, Mary? Well, that's the point. I don't really know what to cut, but what I'm saying is that everybody who kept notes, maybe there are some people who said, well, this looks like it's a little bit too much. This looks like it's a little bit too too low, you know, because you. I would just, I would just, my, I don't disagree with you, Mary. But all I'm saying is, I think we're, I think we're talking about peanuts. And yeah. I know I give, I know I give this speech every year, but this is a budget. This is a plan. This isn't, you know, we're not counting the rolls of paper towel and toilet paper and hand soap. We're trying to look at the, at the high level picture, and I think the people have presented us. Uh, you know, most of the spending, 85% of the spending is, is stuff which is directly in our, in our control and oversight, the roads being the biggest thing. So if you're talking about, if you're talking about cuts, basically we've got to cut the, the highway services or we've got to cut, or we've got to cut the wages. That's the only place there's any real money that's going to make a difference. It's true. Well. That is true. But I, I mean, that's that's the way I feel. I don't know how everybody yeah. else feels. I don't know how the budget committee feels, but uh, you know, we can we can go down line by line and say we can cut a hundred dollars there and fifty dollars there and twenty dollars there, and I'm not sure we're going to come up with anything that amounts to anything. Mm. But others may others may disagree, and I'm happy to listen. We discussed it at our budget committee meeting before this, and we didn't have any brilliant ideas for how to drop the numbers a little. Yeah, you know who knows? We're you know we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a different kind of different kind of town meeting this year with informational meetings and Australian ballot. There's always a chance for the first time in history, and I hate to think this that the budget would get turned down. But who knows? <laughs> I'd be with, with that, with, with that, and with a little hesitancy in my voice, is somebody willing to make a motion? Select board members. So move. Mary. Yep. Is second. There a second. I Bill? second. Okay. So you know, this budget doesn't include um, the um, <clears throat> the petitioned items, the non-petitioned items. You know. No, it does not. So it's going to be a lot this is, this more is than the town budget without all those items. That's all right. Correct. So it's five point three nine, and when we add those, Sarah, do we know what those total, those add-ons? No, and we're not the you know they have until about um, the fourteenth, I believe, to submit. Well, that would be what they'd submit for petition articles. Um, so I don't know. It's weird this year because there are no petitions, but. So far, uh, we're looking. We're, it's kind of it's kind of funky in that some of the big names have not shown up, um, and uh, that includes the Waterbury Senior Center. Um, the who else hasn't shown up? Uh, How about the library? Oh, so the oh, the library showed up, um, but uh, and the Central Vermont uh, Hospice showed up. It said at four thousand fifty-five. The Conservation Commission reduced their budget request to to twenty-five hundred, though, so they halved it. Um, so we may not have as many big ticket ticket items as before. Weirdly enough. So, but aren't we um, allowing all of the ones under two hundred dollars to be on there automatically? That we're right. on. That's the same policy you've had every all uh, throughout your history, which is that if you're under 250 bucks, all you have to do mm -hmm. is just send a letter saying you would like that. But right. this year, year, we didn't even require the letter. We were just going to put them on anyway. Not so. Well, like, every year we, we require some. Oh, no, I think everybody needs to send a letter. Yeah, okay. So I need, we need it for our records. We can't just automatically, you know, we okay. have to request. 
but the, as for the the big ticket items, the rule the rule you guys approved last fall was that if you'd been on the warning in 2020 for an or a special article, which is something over 250 bucks, that you did not need to solicit a petition as long as you were asking for the same amount. So I'm a little surprised right. that. Um, you know, we're missing a few. We still have community connections. That's three thousand um, dollars, and I know that the North Branch Nature Center is currently circulating petitions, and they have until the fourteenth to get that in. So I don't know how much they're going to ask for, but some like the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation has not. They haven't submitted their uh, petition, uh, or they haven't submitted their request. Peter. Well, and, Peter can take care of that. <laughs> and. And neither oh, has, they'll, be, uh, they'll be submitting, don't you worry. And neither has Waterbury. So all you know, they all they need to do is a letter. So I'm surprised they haven't gotten those in yet. How about the senior center in Montpelier? They submitted they have, a letter. They have no. Hmm. You're so talking about a magnitude of like seventy thousand dollars, if I remember correctly, from last year. That's pretty much it, Randy. Yeah, about sixty to seventy thousand dollars. So what's the deadline, Sarah, again? The fourteenth? The 14th, if we're going by the old petition deadline, yes. Okay. I think North Branch is gonna ask for 2000. That's what someone had asked me. They had said to me, do you think the town would pass a $2,000? Yeah. I, said, that sounds I don't awesome. know. <laughs> well, guys, not to, not to cut off the discussion, but truly what we need to do is approve the budget that we have control over right now. Those, yeah. those things are gonna be oh. whatever they are. So yeah. Peter, can I can I just interject one thing? Yep, Seems that we do have the biggest budget, and and uh, Victor brought the thing up about the specialized services. I left it in that area. However, uh, I just went back into my budget stuff and looking in there, <clears throat> I had twelve thousand five hundred in there for this coming year for a uh, subcontractor to do some ditching, and I also had mud mitigation in there twenty thousand dollars for a subcontractor to do. Seeing as how uh, a lot of people in the town didn't like us doing it because it, it took us away from our uh, regular maintenance, so to speak. Uh, yep. So those items are in there. So there's uh, 32,500 if you wanna cut that. Hmm. Well. well. Like I said, that's that's the only place we can, I mean, that in wages are the only place we can cut. So I don't know how people feel. Do we want to, do we want to nudge it down under, what would, what would it take to render to get us down under 5%? So Steve, are you saying take out the entire specialized service line? Well, we, I put that in there um, because we had no other place, but we've done mud mitigation before. I don't know where we put it in our budget. Um, but it I'm saying it was under construction before, I believe. Okay. So anyway, these, so I left it in there in the specialized services but for whatever reason. But again, there, I've got 12,500 in there for ditching. We've already got some money in our Lost him. We lost him. We lost you, Steve. He's frozen up. Yep. No, I think it's I think it's uh it could be Lee Roseberg. Are you still there? Is everybody there there? Yes. The the conservation commission was attempting to sign in to, to create a new meeting. <laughs> so that wasn't it, right? Our budget this year. Okay. Oh, back. back. Okay. Um oh. Let me take out the 12,500. Okay. And that would bring the budget down to 4.45. Okay, can I just bring up one wait more minute, little- Wait a minute, wait a minute. $12,000 reduces the budget? No, it's no, 30, 32. By a whole point? 32. 32,500, Peter. No. No, no, no. 12,500. 12,500, that's all you added in basically for um, the listers was 15,000. Right. So, you know, it, that you basically need to take the 15,000 out. So I did 12,5 and that brought it down to 4,4,5. Uh, I like that number a lot better. 
Um, can I just um, bring up one more cost that maybe, and maybe it's not even my place to do it, but I've been corresponding a little bit with the fire department about the, the firefighter equipment grant through FEMA. And if the, it just opened yesterday, the grant portal, and it's basically available for one month. Um, although come to think of it, I think that would then be this fiscal year, the match. It's a small match. It's 5% of non-federal funds. Um, and I think they said something about the cost of those air tanks would be around 40 to 50,000. So you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, two to 2,500 as a match, but that would be this year's budget because I think the grant starts and the award is in April, but I, they call it a fiscal year 20 grant. Um, well, I would tell you we could get Forty thousand dollars worth of air tax for twenty five hundred dollars. We'll yeah. find that money somehow. Don't All worry. right, so I will let them know that's not a worry and that they should go ahead and apply. Oh, tell them to worry, but tell them to but apply. apply. <laughs> yeah, don't say yeah. anything about. Yeah, just tell them to apply. Yeah, Peter, if I could ask so, a question. How does so, Steve? Just, I mean, that's a relatively small amount of money out of the road budget, but. The bottom line is that's doable and it's not adversely going to affect. Well, no, there's, there's, I mean, I had a 20,000 in there for mud mitigation the way I had this thing figured, but I can change that around a little bit. I think we need to do more ditching, but I mean, we can survive with that. Do we, excuse me, do, do we still have some of that extra 40,000 that was voted last year? We have year? all of that. All of that. Stuff. We have all of it. We haven't used it yet, George. So could that be used? Yes, that well, is my intent. Right. That's one of the statements I did before. My intent yeah. was to use uh, part of that money or as much as I could prior to July 1 and then continue on with the contractor past July 1 to get a lot of ditching done. Okay. That was the intent. Well, maybe we can get a little more done earlier and spend it out of this year's budget where we have the money, if we do. Yeah, be good. So Steve, so, I, I just had a question about uh, with the mud mitigation that you had in the special services line item. Yeah. I noticed that the uh, the road gravel purchase is up like 95, almost 95% over last year. And I'm yeah. just curious to understand if part of that purchase for the road gravel was was for some of that mud mitigation work or if that was all inclusive? No, that, yes, part of it is for the mud mitigation. That wasn't all inclusive. That was, and I got a note right here on my stuff, Brandy. I had that mud mitigation subcontractor equipment only for 20,000. Okay. So that, that so may that be, takes, if that, if takes, that work isn't gonna be done, then I guess where I was going with that is that could potentially be some more savings. Well, <laughs> yes, that could be, but we we need some gravel in this town. That's for sure. I, I don't dispute that. Okay. <laughs> so any anything I can get for, for gravel purchases, I'm going to take. But anyway, yes, I see your point. One of the things that, that we can do if we're unable to spend the $40,000, which is in this year's budget, is buy a bunch of gravel and and stockpile it at the town garage. Yes. And, you know, believe me, we're going to use that gravel. We can use every bit of gravel we can get is the bottom line. Yep. Peter? Yes. Wasn't, or Steve, wasn't the, didn't you say, which is a good idea, I'm not, uh, that you saved uh, 27,000 in uh, sand, winter sand, and you're kind of putting that towards gravel, which I thought was fairly prudent. Isn't that how that got that way? Yes, that's that's some gravel in there. Yes, kind of trading sand for gra gra gravel, which is a good idea. I mean, yes. as I said we can use more gravel on our road. Any? Anyway. Yes. We can't have too much. <laughs> we can't Cover have up any some of that slimy, <laughs> ground up slate. Um, <laughs> so where we I, are, it's been moved in. It, Peter, I accept excuse the me just a second, Mary. So okay. where we are right now, just to be clear, is it's been moved and seconded 
to uh, approve the budget at a million three ninety five two thirty eight. Since then, we have had discussion about reducing that by twelve thousand five hundred per Steve's discussion. So uh, we need to amend the motion or. I accept the amendment. Okay, do I you do. accept the amendment, Phil? The yes. Okay, uh, so now yeah. any, any further discussion? Okay, so let's, so the budget is now, Dorinda, can you give me the new number? 1,382,738. And the percentage? 4.45. Four, four, four yeah, I like that better. I do. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Okay, all in favor of the motion. All of us at some what? point. I just was asking Dorinda will send us the updated spreadsheet. Sure. Of course she will. Thank you, Dorinda. Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye, raise your right hand, whatever. Aye. 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 <laughs> any any opposed? Okay, we have a budget. Thank you. Yay. Phil, is that your, <laughs> did you get your surgery on your hand? Yeah, I had the surgery on the 23rd of December. So you said, and, so I saw, I thought I saw some wrappings around that. Yeah, hand. this is, they just put this cast on today. I came out of the surgical splint early this afternoon and then they put this one on. Great. I hope, so it sounds like it went well. The surgery went well. Yeah, there's a, there's a pin in there that's fairly long keeping everything in place that actually hurts a lot more than the incision or the area where they, they took the bones out, but uh, I'll live. Well, when you're ready, Phil, I can take that out in my shop. We'll just stretch you out on the workbench, give you a little bourbon and I'll take that pin right out of there for you. No problem. No problem. Your rate's got to be better than the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so we're we're behind yeah, schedule here and we've got some uh, we've got some mountains to climb. Thank you very much, uh, budget committee for your uh, for your yep. work and uh, collaboration on this. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Can you appreciate, appreciate the support. It. Thanks. Thanks for all your work. So uh, now Hello. we're gonna move ahead to our Thanks. to our regular meeting and the first item is considering whether to send Middlesex voters postcards. ASAP alerting them of petition requirements for candidates and that the town meeting will be by Australian ballot. And also I believe, and I'm not sure I picked the right agenda because I think there was a, an amended agenda that brought up the issue of uh, informational meetings. And I think we should set the date of at least one of the informational meetings so we can put it on the postcard if we're gonna send out the postcard. Good idea. Um, this is what is, one of my neighbors um, strongly encouraged that we mail out um, Australian, I mean, that, that we mail out ballots to every single person so that we have ensure, you know, that so that we don't make it hard for people to, to vote. Um, can, I, can I address this, Peter? Sure. So Liz, Towns do not currently have the statutory authority to do that. Um, okay. We are, all the town clerks been going back and forth. The le legislature just came into town today, right? Or is it next yeah. week? Right. So they have, the legislature was supposed to pick that up in December and they didn't. And okay. so the, the considering, considering the lateness of the hour, most of the towns are just sending out postcards like you got in um, the summer saying, you know, this, please, Please call this. Please send back this postcard so that you can uh, mm -hmm. uh, get on the town get a, get an absentee ballot. Okay. So, do do you think that the um, that the legislature is not going to vote on this? I think I think late. that the um, I think that if we wait until January nineteenth to find out whether which is your next select board meeting to figure out whether or not they're going to do that and we set it out it's going to be really late if we can send out post I'm thinking that if you guys approve um, this tonight including whether or not there is return postage for the for the postcards I forget whether or not the Secretary of State's office had that we can uh, have those postcards ready to go on Monday. Um, 
So what? if we send out the postcard, does that mean that, I mean, I, I obviously we want to send out a postcard, but does that mean that um, there's, that, that we would, it would be unlikely that we would do a um, town-wide mailing because it would just get too confusing for people because they got one message in the postcard originally? I, I think that the postcard solves two problems. One, it gives people a heads up about what's going on with town meeting, you know, because a lot of people, if we just send out ballots to everyone, we're also going to have to send out postcards or something, letting people know um, that there is going to be no in-person meeting. The other, um, the other thing is I think that a lot of voters are already tuned in for this. We got a huge turnout for the August primary using those postcards. And people were, even though they knew that the Secretary of State's office was mailing everybody a November 3rd general election ballot, they still mailed back their postcards to say, I also want to be on the November, I want a November 3rd general election ballot. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's up to you guys what you want to do. I just think that waiting for the legislature is a little risky. But that postcard is the same one that we got that actually has our name on it and we return it to you and say, yes, we want an right. Australian well, ballot. I'm using the same template that the Secretary of State's office is, is oh, uh, sending okay. out. And I'm going to redo the words with information that you guys want to have on on the um, on the, on the card. Included. And you know, and then and then people will send it back. I'm already getting requests for absent people. We have I have it on the website, so people have already been asking. I I I just think that I think it will be a lot of a lot of information, pretty confusing if we're doing everything back and forth. It seems like a lot of work for you. Is it not more work for you to just be mailing them out piecemeal? I'm just curious. I think that mailing out 14. 1,475 absentee ballots to people who do not want uh, absentee ballots is a waste of time and money and resources. I do think that letting people know through postcards that we're doing this is really valuable because among other things, we'll tell them that you can run for office without a petition, you know? So we at this point cannot statutorily do it. We do not have that legal authority. Okay, thank you. So I think the bottom line is, I think we definitely need to do the postcards. I mm -hmm. think we need to have, pick a date for the informational meeting so we can put that on the postcard. And if all of a sudden the ledger, legislature passes something and the whole world changes, then we can figure out if we want to do something else. But uh, I, am, I, am, I am getting... Every time I am out in public, people are asking me, what about town meeting? What about town meeting? What about town meeting? They want to know. So uh, we've made our decision and I think we need to let the community know that. Um, but but uh, she also mentioned, she, Sarah, mentioned that we should tell people they can run without having to get a petition. That's, are you proposing we put that on there too, Sarah? Well, that's what you, that's up for you guys to decide. But I mean, that is what a, that is one of the key changes is that all you have to do is file a, a re uh, submit a consent of candidate form. The one that Berlin sent out basically says there's there's no in person town meeting. We're doing uh, ballots. They will be avail. You can request an absentee ballot now, and we will send them as soon as you get them. Town reports will be available in the middle of February. And if you want to run for office, you need to just submit. A, you don't need a petition, but you need to submit a, a consent of candidate form by 5 p.m. January 25th. That's all it says. So if you guys don't want to put that on there, it's fine. Who who's out yeah, for the election? Uh, Peter and Steve. Okay. Um, oh, I just did the warning. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Uh, the treasurer is up for re-election uh, because that's a one-year office. The collector of delinquent taxes is up. That's a one-year office. Uh, we have several members of the budget committee that are who are up. Of uh, the moderators is up. There is a lister position that'll be available. Um, that was that's occupied by Dick Alderman. Uh, let's see. He's not running again? No, we haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything from Dick and I don't expect to. Uh, the cemetery commission, uh, the posts currently, the, there's a position currently held by Janet McKinstry is up. Uh, on the planning commission, uh, Sandy Levine's uh, 
position is up for re-election and so is Mitch Oshekis. And I think the, um, I don't know about the grand juror. I think the select board can appoint a grand juror. I don't think that the town eight or it's vice versa. Well, I guess at some point the legislature got rid of either the grand juror or the town agent, but I think that can be elected by the select board. I I've got to get a clarification of that from this. From I always would move to have Todd Delos be the grand juror at the beginning of the meeting, one of the first items. Right, let's just like people move to elect Susan Clark, but now Susan Clark is going to have to submit a consent of candidate form and have her name on the ballot. Yeah, so I think that, I think grand juror has to do that, yeah. yeah. So my recommendation would be, I wanna make this process as open and public and Me too. whatever it can be. I think we put it on there. So if you're interested in running for if you're interested in running for office, you need to sign a consent form and submit it by the due date. Yeah, I agree. I think I it's agree. Good. So I think so, the only other thing then of what we want to put on there is the informational meetings. Correct. And that right. needs to be so the, the question, the gigantic question on the informational meeting is how many people are going to want to participate. And how we and how we control that. And I don't, Susan Clark. I don't know if you have any any thoughts about how that could go. But we need to schedule one meeting at least within ten days of the town meeting. And my concern is, as much as I don't really expect this to happen, and if all of a sudden we have a hundred people who want to participate in a in a Zoom informational meeting, it's going to be a circus. But maybe I, not. I don't know. Susan, just, what, what do you think? Um, let's see. I mean, I think I I think I, um, that there might be a hundred or hundred fifty or more people that would like to sit in on an informational meeting. I don't think it has to be a circus. I think that um, you can. I mean, I. I I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to find somebody in Middlesex who has the expertise to um, be the, you know, one or two people who, who could be sort of the tech person for the call to make sure that um, there's somebody in charge of, you know, troubleshooting any tech issues that people are having. Um, somebody who knows how to make sure that everybody is muted and uh, and and then unmute them if they uh, use the hand raising. Um, you know, there, there's some tools I think that are the regular Zoom. Um, um, system can 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 use to have this because because it really is it's not a town meeting it's an informational meeting which is really different it's more like a public hearing where you guys are it's the select board that runs it it's it's your meeting um and you know you can make presentations and then have a q a session so it's it's really not you know the people's meeting the way a, a town meeting is um so so you can have way more control hmm. what about uh even deal with I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the screen on my laptop here and we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 people. If we had 25 people, the little images would be really small. If we had 125 people, people, people it would what'll really happen is there'll be, you, there, you can scroll through screens. There'll be like this screen and then there'll be the next screen, next screen, next screen. But um, you can have somebody in charge of um, the, the raised hand function that would, and all of, all of the names would appear um, in their toolbox, and um, so they could, you know, inform whoever it is who's who's running the meeting. Um, you know, okay, the next person in, in queue is you know Joe Smith, um, and so the it, it I, I do think it takes a team. Um, you know, somebody who's monitoring the the raised hand function, somebody who's monitoring people who dial in because they're having trouble getting in through Zoom, or you know, the, somebody who's troubleshooting some of the tech stuff, but. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, there, there are people who do um, this stuff all the time with hundreds, literally hundreds, you know, 300. What about our guy from uh, who lives over near the cemetery that does our, our virtual stuff? Well, he doesn't do virtual, but he's done all our sound stuff at the town meeting. Oh, Bennett. Yeah. Oh. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. I, I think we've got, I think we've got time to figure out how we work on this. I think what we need to do tonight is, is set a date. Yep. And uh, what are we thinking, Sarah? Have you got a calendar in front of you by any chance? I sure do. 
And can I just add one other thing that I would love to see on the um, postcard? I think that it's a great idea to, to set the date for the informational meeting so that that can be on the postcard. Um, and, you know, obviously the date and place and time for the, you know, ballot voting um, and calling it ballot voting, call it, it might be a good idea. Not everybody knows what Australian ballot means. Um, but um, I think it would be great to just make it clear somewhere in small print that it's um, this is this was emergency legislation that was passed um, because of COVID and that this is a one year, uh, you know, so just to make it clear pe to people who are reading the postcard that this isn't like a change that Middlesex, you know, it, is making, but that it's a, a lot of it's, towns are doing this for one year. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Mentioning COVID. Yeah, mention the COVID. So how about a date, Sarah? Okay, so if you're going to get you do you have to, first of all, do you have want to have one or two informational meetings? I think we schedule one. If we get overwhelmed, we can schedule a second one somehow. Uh, that would be my that would be my thinking based on what what Susan has told us. Well, I then, can't imagine we would have more than hundred people. Well, we'll record it as well. Right. So the um, my recommendation is that you hold it the last Tuesday before town meeting. Which would be that's not Tuesday. ten days. Two what? That's it, not ten days, is it? Doesn't it have to be within ten days? Yeah, within I think. It has, it has to be within. Yeah. Right. So it has to be within ten days. So that would be the twenty third of February. Okay. Can I just make a comment? I find that ridiculous because with with all the absentee ballots, people will have already voted. And it's like, because they're afraid their ballot's not going to get to the town clerks in time. And so they're going to submit their ballot on February 2nd and then either not come to the meeting because they've already voted. So are we sure about that? It has to be held? Well, I'm going to be ridiculous. Well, most, most of the, like the select, the uh, school board holds their informational meeting. They always have uh, like the Monday before. Uh, I know, but most people come in and vote. They don't do it. Uh, by I, hear, I, hear what saying. I just, um, I I'm want, just making a point that that's, I'm not happy with. Maybe that. we have to have two and the first one will be attended. And the second one will be very, very small. Like the school board one is. I don't see be. why we can't have an informational meeting open to the public. Why does it have to be? And then we have another one that is within this tent, like what Mary just said. What like do you mean no by open to the public list? They're all going to be open to the public. Yeah. Right. So how can there be like, is the state really saying that we as a town cannot hold a warned meeting that invites the public to talk about whatever? You can. They're just saying that you must hold an informational meeting within 10 days. Okay. That's all they're, so, they're not saying you can't discuss, you're, you're discussing it right now. They can't, they, you, right. it's just that you must hold at least an informational meeting within 10 days. Well, I think personally then we should have, because this is a special year, I think then we should have two meetings, but that's just my opinion. One that's earlier that, that, that allows people to ask questions and talk before they vote. And then I one that, after I, that. That's a good point. That. I think most people, the people who are going to vote absentee are going to vote before the 10 days. I agree. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. I want to ask whether we're going to send out the town report because I think that one people should have the town report before they go to an informational meeting. Well, I so, mean, you're asking for a, 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 a lot because <laughs> the. Um, <sighs> So the, I can't put out the town report. I don't think it is a wise idea to put out the town report, especially this year without the ballot in it. We have always traditionally put out the town report with the ballot in it. Um, so that means waiting until the 25th of January. Most towns are not putting out their town, their, their town reports are hitting, uh, are becoming public like in the middle of February. So that's the, that's the fine line where we're walking. Of course, we have a statutory obligation to have it, I think within 10 days of the of town meet before 10 days before town meeting, or else we have to take out an ad in the paper with a warning. But it would be great if we get, everybody could have a town report by February 1st, but realistically, that's just almost impossible. So what, what date are you saying it's likely that everybody would have a town report? Well, <laughs> well I'm, what I'm suggesting is let's let's set up a second informational meeting 
five days or seven days or whatever after you think the town report's going to be out. And then well, here's, what I, here's what I think. I think that Marika is going to probably, our goal is to get submit the town report to Jet Set Printing or whatever they are um, by uh, January 28th. When we do that, that town report will be available in PDF version on our website as it always is in that day. So theoretically, if you have a, if you have web access, you'll be able to go onto the Middlesex Vermont website and read the whole town report on January 28th. When that report gets delivered by um, jet service to all the voters is another question. I mean, where we're all the towns come in at the exact same time, as you know, I mean, we've got, we're queued up, but there's nothing special about us. We all have the same deadlines. So give me a date, Sarah. What do you think? I think the town report will hit mailboxes if we're lucky on February 13th. Okay. Well, that's that's better than, you know, that's scheduling that's a meeting for the 15th, 16th, 17th of February is a lot better than doing it eight days before, mm -hmm. uh, before town meeting. So pick a day. So here's what I suggest. I suggest that you guys um, pick a non-traditional date for um or maybe with zoom it doesn't matter uh you could do you could do tuesday the 16th and then meet again and then hold another uh, meeting on the 23rd those are two tuesdays in a row the 23rd uh fulfills the statutory obligation and the 16th fulfills the realistic obligation that sounds good to me does that make yeah. you happier liz yes dorinda uh just out of curiosity, I looked up what it meant by the term within so many days. And I almost think it means it has to be done by the 10th day, depending on how you read it. Because it's day. saying if you say something has to be done within seven days, that means that the first remer um, the first refers to the actual date, and then it's seven days where today it's, is zero it's really really aggravating i totally agree with you it's very unclear i know that the um i know that that's why the school board holds it right within the meeting they i mean it, it's like the same thing with warning must be done within you know 10 days of a for a bond vote my if you guys do it on the 16th and the 23rd you will have covered all your bases you will have given everybody plenty of information uh be within close to the town meet close to town meeting when people are more interested and you'll also have uh you know give the early voters enough time to talk and discuss so you i think you're playing it really safe by holding two informational meetings that way are you when are the ballots going to be ready <laughs> Sorry. That's what I, when how soon will you be sending the ballots out? Well, uh, you know, I've uh, I've talked to John Jens Jess Jessemeth or whatever his name is, John at uh, Jet Set Printing. We have to wait until the 25th when all the can when at 5 p.m. the candidates are done. I assume we're going to send the draft ballots out on the 26th of January to the printer. How fast John can turn that around, I don't know. I would assume it'll probably take him about, you know, again, what his schedule is, is gonna be, it's gonna take him about four to five days to turn around. So I would assume that we would probably, in our, in a, if we are lucky, we would be mailing ballots out February 2nd, February 1st or February 2nd. Okay, so, yeah. I think that's the best we can do, guys. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say I, have I, it I think sooner. I think it is good to know what what's the date you think the the uh, the town report will be on the on the website, Sarah? The twenty eighth of January. Yeah. So that so if somebody calls up and says, "Gee, I need to vote now because I'm leaving for Florida and I'm nervous about the mail getting there." We can say, well, you can look at the town report on the website. And then we'll say to them, what the hell are you doing going to Florida? You're supposed to stay home. <laughs> well, I, just, I just wondered if we didn't want to do it even sooner than the, the 16th. Well, that's what I'm wondering. But, you know, you're asking, 
I mean, I just don't know how many people are, everybody reads the town report who's going to vote, I think, but I don't know if people are going to go on the website and look at that. Well, why don't you cancel well, your that's meeting? the only way they can get it, Mary, they will. I think the 16th and the 23rd are, are two good dates and that covers everything. Covers all your bases. Yep. So, so Sarah, do most people who get an absentee ballot send it in right as soon as they get it? I mean, do you well, have kind of thoughts about that? I would say before 2020, um, the people who voted by absentee ballot for town meeting were regulars who were going to Florida or they had kids in school and they didn't want to go to town meeting and they were, you know, very regular mm -hmm. voters. Everything has changed. So I, I, don't, I don't know what to expect. I don't know. I personally think that like, I, I get the feeling that people are going to get, I mean, what is it? Three weeks? I don't know. Are people going to hold on to their ballots and say, oh, I can't wait for this meeting? Um, or do we want to have it sort of timed so that it's not, you know, 10 days after they've gotten their ballot and their... Um... Guys, I think, I think... All right, fine. Just do it the 16th. <laughs> I just think we need to make a decision. I'm not, I'm not trying to cut off discussion, but I think we're trying to, we're talking about things that we just don't know how it's going to go. It is going to be whatever it is. I think yeah. we we've got to make, we've got to make a good faith effort to get the best information out to people as soon as they can and give them the opportunity to attend informational meetings and hope they do. Uh, whether they do or not is going to be a question. I think we need to, uh, I, I agree with Susan Clark on two things. Number one, I think we need to find and think about quickly because these people are going to be in demand who we're going to ask to be the technical people behind the scenes uh, to run these Zoom meetings. And I think the other thing we need to work on when we have some time, but you know, we need to put together uh, an organized presentation for these informational meetings. I just don't want to have it be you know, you've all got the town report. Does anybody have any questions? You know, that's going to be a downer of a informational meeting. So, uh, well, Susan, Bill, can, Susan can help us with that. I have, I have some ideas about it, but uh, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be a presentation with lots of opportunity for questions. I guess that's what I'm saying. But it can't just be, I, you know, we have we had public hearings in the past where we say, well. You know, here are the new zoning regulations. Everybody's read them over. Anybody have any questions? Well, no, that isn't going to work. I don't think. Well, Phil was nice enough one year to write up a summary for us. So maybe we can talk him into doing that again. I'm looking at you, Phil, to see if you, what your response is going to be. Yeah, I can do that. Well, but I, th but I think it needs to be more than that, Mary. Yeah. I, th I think it needs to be you know, like all of us divide it up and we talk about different, I don't, I don't know how we do it. We've got time to think about it, but I, I envision this being a good, and, and, you know, Phil's thing, an overview of the budget is great, but whether it's Phil or you, Mary, or me, or whoever it is, should be ready to talk about it and ready to answer questions. That's all I'm saying. So, I agree. So I think what we're hearing, and I hope somebody's going to make a motion, um, that we're going to do the postcards. We've discussed what the information is going to be on the postcards. I didn't hear any uh, any disagreement on that. And the the two items that we agreed to add were one, uh, a COVID statement explaining that this is a one year special special deal, and also the fact that we're going to put the line in there about if you're interested in running for public office, what you need to do. Right. Mm -hmm. so, somebody ready to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, in a second, please. I'll second. Thank you, Phil. All in favor of the motion, I won't restate it all since I already just did. <laughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then. You're happy, Sarah, I hope. I just, we well, you know. We, did, we didn't do the dates. I just want to just be clear of the dates. Oh, the date should be in the motion. Yes, I'm right. sorry. The, the you dates amend the motion to, the, to include the dates. At 5 p.m. Is that what we're doing? 5 p.m. at, uh, or do you want to set the informational meetings at a certain time? What do you, what do you want to do? So there's the old devilish question, Susan Clark, whether it's better to have it 
late in the afternoon before dinner or after dinner? It is a devilish question. And I think that Sarah nailed it when she said everything's different now. Um, you know, certainly back in the day, people had to be, be at work and then they came home from work and then they went to meetings. And nowadays everybody works at home <laughs> or if they work at all. Um, so I, um, you know, I, your call. Um, I, I think with families, we don't, you know, kids and stuff like that. I think we should be in the evening. I, I think we should um, have it be at 5.30 or 6. Like maybe we start our meeting and we have a meeting for a half an hour and then people join at 5.30 or something. Well, if you remember our town meetings, we have some people who are there right at 4.30 and then we have people dribbling in, you know, yeah. a, for an hour, hour and a half because um, they're coming home from work. So, um, and, and people work still like that. I, you know, mm -hmm. we have jobs during the day. So I think we should have it be in the evening. But also there are people in our town who have to be in their jobs in town. Not everybody can work at home. Right. We full of that. Right. Well, maybe we do. How about this? Maybe we do one, one meeting earlier and one meeting later. Sure. I mean, I also don't mind five thirty or six. I, th I think anything earlier than five is too early. So, if if you think five thirty or six is the magic time, that's that's fine for me. That gives you time to feed your kids an early supper and come to the meeting. And for those of us who eat a little later, we won't starve to death. We don't eat until seven thirty or eight o'clock. I don't know. Six. I say um, let's turn it to six o'clock. Yeah, have that both, gets I agree. Both, home from have work. Both, of them, both of them at six o'clock. I think if yeah. we have different times, I think we're likely to confuse people. That's the only thing that worries me. About yeah, that. let's do six o'clock both times, and they'll be recorded. So if people are really interested; they can watch the recording at their leisure. There you go. You and might want to include something. Oh, sorry. I just had an idea that um, just as you're going to record the meetings, um, you might want to think about ahead of the meetings, putting on front porch forum, you know, reminding people that these meetings are happening. And if they want to submit questions ahead of time, um, you know, they could email them um, so that you guys know the kinds of questions people are, are likely to have. And maybe that means that then great idea. if they can't attend the meeting, they know their question will be in the recording later. Yeah. That's, I sure. think that's fine. I mean, definitely we should do the front porch forum thing. Yeah. Um, do we want to put something, and I know we just approved the postcard, but do we want to put something on the postcard saying you'll be able to submit uh, questions in advance of the meetings? Postcard's going to get pretty crowded. Uh, can I, yeah. How about if I, if I can fit it in, we'll fit it in. I'm going to design the postcard tomorrow, so. Okay. Perfect. Otherwise, it's a good idea, Susan. Plus it. Plus, it's likely that we'll get better answers if we have a chance to think about the questions beforehand. <laughs> okay, so I know that was a little convoluted, but you've, you've got that, Sarah? The dates, the times? Uh, 6 p.m. on February 16th and February 23rd via Zoom. Yep. yep. Email question submitted in advance. Yep. Okay. Uh, Sarah, this is a question. Do you want to put the Zoom address on that? Yeah, I, I will. I'm not going to put it in the minutes, but I'm, I'm going to fiddle around with the postcards. Well, what I mean is the Zoom instructions so that that postcard is their way in. Yep. Got it in my, got it in my. I would have been a big oversight if they said you could Zoom, but they don't know how to get in there. <laughs> the only thing I, so here's my thought about that. If there's one thing I don't like about Zoom is if you've got printed out the Zoom address, entering, the, entering that Zoom address and getting it correct with all the gobbledygook that goes into one of those Zoom addresses is confusing. I, I think uh, I think somehow we want to send out send out an email or post it on the website so people can click on it. I will do that too. I, I just, like. I just find I entering entering a whole Zoom address and getting. Correct. I, can't so really email to, I can't do I can't I just physically cannot create an email list for the town that's just that's just gonna that's a whole new database and some people don't but no, I can, no, we can no, but just to just to say this the zoom address will be on the website absolutely yes thank you 
I was just suggesting you do the meeting ID and say one tap mobile and leave out all the rest of the stuff because I type it in each time and I don't have a problem. That's what I was going to do. I was just going to zoom whatever and then and then put the meeting ID there. That does, that never changes. Yeah, never changes and it's one tap so you don't have to have a password. Makes it simple. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay, then we're all set on that one. Yep. Move approval of the audit. <laughs> oh, sure. Is there a oh. second? <laughs> Bill? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, tell us about it now. <laughs> well, so I have a couple of comments, and I think, I think Dorinda has a couple of comments. Number one, uh, this was a tough audit cycle for a lot of reasons, but uh, one of the reasons was, one of the important reasons is, I swear to God, I remember when our audit was seven pages and now it's 46 pages. And I find digging through all those exhibits and trying to oh. figure out what's really going on to be very challenging. And in terms of trying to figure out whether it's, whether it's actually correct or not. The mm -hmm. bottom line is who knows, but it is frustrating that it has become, and it isn't, it isn't, uh, it isn't necessarily uh, Bonnie's fault on this. Uh, the, the good old AICPA is making this tougher and tougher uh, every year, more expensive every year and more, more difficult to understand every year. Um, so with that said, what I would say is what Dorinda always says to me, and she'll probably say it again to you in a minute, you know, nobody's saying anybody stole the money. Um, did we have a few adjusting journal entries we needed to do? Did we miss post some stuff in the wrong time frames due to lack of training or whatever on, on the part of our bookkeeper? All pretty minor stuff, as much as the auditor in her, in her comments and her letter makes them sound like a big deal. To me, they're not a big deal at all. So I'm, I'm ready to accept the audit. Uh, Dorinda and I did negotiate with her to change things around a little bit. Not that it really amounted to that much, but it made us feel better. So Dorinda with that, I'll turn it over to you. I don't have much else to add. I will say that um, the adjustments were normal adjustments. The only thing that the adjustments and they all related to was it's accrued accounting and the journal entries were made as cash accounting entries. So it was a matter of getting those straightened back out. Um, but seven entries to take care of all the last minute. And the other big problem was everybody on the last minute was pushing through all their bills. So had they come through prior to July, they would have been in the correct month to begin with. So um, that's basically what happened. Yeah. But I've been through many audits and seven entries is a walk in the park. I agree. Any other questions or comments? No, I'll just add that I too, I, I spend about an hour looking at that report and it's just there. If you don't understand that kind of, you know, audit language, it's really confusing. Um, and it's a hard, you know, I obviously will approve it, but like, it's, it's hard for me to understand or to know if there was any, you know, inconsistencies or anything, you know, wrong going on. I mean, I just wouldn't know, but I guess that's why we have an auditor. That's their job. Right. So. And in her summary, she said there was no yeah nothing going on. There were right. no inconsistencies. It was a matter of a misposting. Yeah. The summary is helpful for sure. Yeah. Anything else, anyone? We're ready to vote to, it, it's been moved and seconded to accept the audit. Are we ready for a vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We've accepted the audit. I have, I have two other quick things. One, in the past, it's been our practice to have the auditor come in and meet with us, however briefly, and at least give us an overview. Uh, 
I found that process in the past to be of relatively mixed benefit. I don't know how others feel about that, especially when we've already approved the audit. It's not like anything's going to change. No, that's what I would say. If we were going to have her in, I think we should have had her in before we voted to approve. Yeah. Well, Dorinda and I raked her over the coals the best we could. <laughs> um, so, so I will, I will say to Rinda that we are not not going to have her in. And I guess the second item is uh, both Dorinda and I feel not just based on on what happened this year, but based on <laughs> based on good practice that it's time to put the audit out for bid. And I would recommend that we do that. I don't yeah. need to know if we need a motion on that. I think Dorinda can just do it. Yeah. What uh, was that? Our third year with Monty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's time to go out to bid. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. So Dorinda, you will just do that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Treasurer's report: review of town financial issues. Action possible. Dorinda. Um, really no issues right now. Been concentrating on the budget. And um, as you alluded to earlier, we've only gotten actually one physical application um, for the job. And I really don't think the qualifications on it are anything you're looking for, but I've got it in the file. And we've had um, two people from that are current, actually three, current treasurers from other towns that have expressed, you know, they inquired about the job and expressed some interest in possibly applying for it. Um, so that's something I think, I don't wanna spend any time on it tonight. I think we've got other things we need to get to, but um, maybe at the next meeting, we should decide how we want to move forward. Do we think is our, our ad is no longer running, right? Um, with the seven days ad, we ran for two weeks and got a week free. So I think we still have another week out on that one. But nothing's nothing's in, and we are on the uh, municipal website thing. Yeah, yeah. Sarah put well, something out there, there, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And also VLCT's website. So yeah, VLCT Times Argus seven days and VMCTA. I'll put another post on the, the clerk's website. That'd be good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dorinda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Highway report update on road commissioner status due to hiring of new road foreman. I resign. Whether to <laughs> Advertise the position, et cetera, et cetera. You can all read that. Steve. I resign. Moment, Steve. Done. Yeah, so officially I am done as road commissioner. Um, and and I in talking about this, I, I think we need to put it out, uh, advertise for it, but I think we need to uh, look at what we've got for a job description in there and maybe go through that before that is done. And, and I'll also, while I'm talking, I'll also put in there that I'd like to th think, and I don't know if I, this has to be an emotion probably, but I would, um, if I have to do that, I'll make it a motion that we put Peter in there as interim uh, road commissioner. Second. So anything else, anything else Steve, before we vote on that? No, I mean, I would I would just say, guys, um, we've had a couple of people uh, express interest in the position, but um, I think we all in discussing this earlier, we all agreed that it was appropriate to 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 put it out in the usual way. I don't think necessarily we have to uh, have a complete uh, job description. Uh, at the time we advertise, certainly we need to have a complete job description by the time people start inquiring and we start sending out information, but we need to do the job description as soon as possible. So, um, and I would also say, and things are a little out of order here, that 
Uh, Shane did start on, on Monday. Steve and I went down and, and met with him uh, bright and early Monday morning. And he's out there learning the names of our roads and where they go and what they need. And he's, uh, and he's engaged. So I think he passed me walking my dog. There you go. <laughs> Good. I was like, wait, I think that's our new Good. road commissioner. <laughs> I, I did, uh, I, I did ask him, uh, I hope he will maybe participate in our, in our next zoom meeting. So, so you can all meet him face to face or, or screen to screen. Um, Wow. That'd be a good thing. And I also, uh, Sarah suggested he, he stop by and uh, meet you in person and at an appropriate time Dorinda in person, just so we, you know who you're dealing with and he knows who he's, he's dealing with. But as far as I know, everything is good. So with that, I am willing to serve. I, I said I would and I will. I've already had my first, uh, my first road commissioner challenge yesterday, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But Let's let's vote first. All in favor of Peter being interim zoning, uh, zoning. Jesus, heaven forbid. Uh, <laughs> you can do that too. Uh, Bro. Bro. Into, uh, Bro. Until we're able to fill a position, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I'm your guy. So here's here's the quick. Yes, Dorinda. Can I ask a quick question? Has his email been updated so we can contact him through the highway email? Right at the moment, there is no computer at the town hall, but there no, was the, so yeah. Right. Yeah, as of Thursday, we'll have him on online. Okay, well, it's it'll still be the old highway email or? Well, we're changing over the whole email system, remember? So I think we're gonna put him right into the new into the new system so that we don't have okay. to. But what we'll do, I think, uh, Dorinda, for a while, and I, I have to find out how to get into those accounts, is to put forwarding um, on. So if somebody sends it to those old Comcast addresses, it'll automatically forward. But anyway, okay. we'll, we're, we're working on that. OK. So uh, Sarah, on another issue, just quickly, we should make sure we update the website. Yep. Thank you. Um, so here's the quick, quick little story. I'm sitting here happily reading one of my car repair, repair magazines after lunch the other day with my feet up in front of the wood stove, very relaxed and content. And my phone rings and it's a contractor from Barry who is building a house on Macy Road. And he says to me, so I have a 18 wheel tractor trailer arriving tomorrow morning loaded with 36 foot long roof trusses and I need to deliver them to Macy Road and I'm wondering if that truck can go over that bridge or access Macy Road from the top. I said A, he cannot go over the bridge. This is an hour and a half into my new job. B, <laughs> B, I think it is a very bad idea for him to head down Macy Road from the top because he won't be able to turn around. He'll have to back all the way out of there. There's no way. And it's it's two and a half miles from the top of Macy Road to the house site. <laughs> so here I am right in the right in the breach. So I said to him, I said, I think I have the authority to do this. I hope I have the authority to do this, but here's what I'm willing to do. I'll say that tractor trailer can drop off those trusses at our town garage in a suitable place so they don't block the garage doors, the sand pile, the fuel tank, everything else. And then you can hire Allen Lumber or Sticks and stuff to come uh, with their boom truck and move those trusses. He called me back three hours later and said Allen Lumber agreed to have the trusses delivered to their yard and they're gonna put them on their truck and deliver them. Whew, I was relieved. <laughs> <laughs> All I could see was that tractor trailer jammed up in that little bridge or yeah. down over the bank two and a half miles down Macy Road. It wouldn't have been pretty. So I've already had my back sorry, I... fire and I didn't even have to call Steve. So there you go. Good job, Peter. So Steve, Notch Road, continuing discussion on town's role, if any, winter maintenance, a class four section, et cetera. He's frozen again. Steve, Steve, Steve. 
Maybe he's frozen because he's no longer the road commissioner. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He just moved. Maybe the air. He's gone again. <laughs> yeah. Giving him a giving him a second here. Yeah, I'm here. So I plan to up. Oh, now he's gone again. Yeah. Peter, while he's coming back in, I just have a question about the Great advertisement. Wrote along with WMA, positions. I mean, it's a, it's a. He doesn't know he keeps going out. No. Steve, you keep cutting in and out. Yeah, it's my internet connection. Sorry. Okay, well, we've got you now. Okay. So, anyway, there is a plan in place to, uh, for us to upgrade that road along with WMA because they would like to put in a larger parking area and that would be extending that class four road. Um, well, it's about a thousand feet altogether, uh, making that a, a class three section so that we would plow all the way to a double parking lot that would include the town of Middlesex for the, for the uh, town forest and uh, a section there for WMA. There'd probably be room for about 18 to 20 cars. And that's what we've been talking about. Um, and that's, I haven't talked with, there's a new guy in the WMA uh, and I haven't talked with him. So, I mean, I, I don't know where this is going yet, but I'll, I'll stay the point person on it, but. Steve, what does WMA stand for? Wildlife Management Area. State of Vermont. Okay. Thanks. So the the issue we have there is we have at least one neighbor, maybe more, who is very anxious to have this happen and very frustrated with the current situation and the safety issue and and uh, and other things. And there is at least one other neighbor who absolutely is opposed to doing anything to that road. So, you know, I think we need to be very careful as we, as we work our way through this to make sure not necessarily that we're gonna follow what the neighbors want, but that at least we get everybody's input up there and just don't go along with, with, uh, with one person's opinion about what should, what should happen. Peter. I agree with that. Yes. Sarah. So, you know, there's a statutory process for this, correct? Sure. Yes. Right. And that involves, I just want to get in the minutes and I just want to get in the public. That involves tons of public notification, especially of neighbors and opportunities for public, for the neighbors to express their concerns. So it's not right. something that can be done just by the select board without public input, right? Oh, no, no. We understand well, that. Yep. Okay. But it's more important that I want people who are listening in to understand that. Okay. 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 And it can either be done by the select board, or of course, it can be done by petition from neighbors, or from from anyone in Middlesex, or from anyone. Correct. Correct. Well, I, I mean, the point is, the the point is, it's 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 very much a work in progress, um, and uh, you know, I know there's some frustration on at least some of the neighbors that we're not we're not moving fast enough, but you know, it's a it's a process and it takes time. And when you're dealing with the state of Vermont, everything takes a little extra time, needless to say. So with that, here's my favorite item of tonight's agenda. Revisiting well, the school district's, excuse me. Nothing. Okay. The school district's request that the town assume maintenance of a charging station for electrical vehicles at the Rumney School Action Possible. Um, we all received that letter uh, before, before our last meeting, um, we decided to defer the discussion and, uh, decision until tonight. Um, from my point of view, I found their request to be, uh, a little, a little outrageous, a little, a little, a little far reaching, but I don't know how, I don't know how other, uh, other people feel about it, but we need to respond to their letter. So what are your thoughts? Well, this is Liz. I would say, um, I mean, one of the things is that an electric charger 
is, um, you know, part of our town plan, you know, for improving energy efficiency and encouraging, you know, clean energy. Um, and, you know, we want to encourage people to work in Middlesex. So, you know, that is an employee, a place where people are employed. Um, and even though it is possibly no one using it or staff using it, I believe that in the future, you will see much more usage than we have in the past of electric cars. My suggestion would be that we offer to go have these on it with them. And whatever the cost is, we'll pay for half and they pay for half. I don't think we should pay well, right for the whole now, thing. Right now, the situation is, um, which is really my question, is right now it's my understanding that the parent teachers organization pays for the cost of the electricity? Well, it's not the cost of the electricity that's the big deal, I don't think. I think it's the maintenance and the, the, the cost of the structure itself and having a contract with charge point. I think that's the big cost. I'd have to look at that letter again. Um, well, they didn't have it. The letter, was, the letter was, not, was not at all clear. And I, I meant to look at it again before tonight's meeting and I didn't. Uh, well, you can also pay to charge your car. Like, I mean, charge point. As far as I know, when I pull up I mean, the you can do it for free. Pay. <laughs> right, I'm saying there, there's there's two there's two models. Like the one that I use in Barry is free because the town pays for it. But if I'm going into Montpelier, I have to swipe my card and pay for it there. You know, and it, and it comes off my card. And anyone who has an electric car has that capacity to to go to a charge point. So the it's not the cost one. of electricity. It's the it's the structure okay. itself. So is our electric car expert, our in-house electric car expert. Right now, there are charging stations at the Red Hen, and there is a charging station at the uh, Park and Ride, correct? Correct. And are those pay-as-you-go charging stations or free? Do you know? Uh, I, th I think you pay for those at the Red Hen. I don't know, though. I've never, I don't think I've ever used it. Um, but for the most part, they're not free. For the most part, you pay for them. Yeah. Um, there's just certain places that will do like, ten, like, like, um, like Barry, they have one that's free to use yeah. and they pay for it. But for the most part, you pay for those things. Okay. So, so my, my other question, and then I'll, then I'll shut up and listen is it seems to me that a charging station by the school would be used primarily and probably principally by employees of the school. And right now there are none who have electric cars. So it doesn't get, it hasn't been used at all in the last right. year is my understanding, which makes it sound like a bad value. I don't think, I just can't imagine, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I can't imagine for instance, you Liz, having your husband follow you up to the school so you can leave your car there overnight in that dark parking lot, plugged into the charger, then he takes you home, then he brings you back in the morning to pick up your electric car. No. Now, maybe you would if it was an emergency, but ordinarily you wouldn't. It's for it would no, be you would never do that. No. There. You know, so the park and ride right, but I think it makes sense. Maybe it makes sense at the red hen. It really doesn't make if there were right. 10, 10 teachers at the school who wanted to charge their electric cars, I'd say, you know, maybe okay. And I like the idea of electric cars, but I just don't think the school is the place, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah. Peter. Yes. The, other, the other thing, I don't have that letter in front of me now, but wasn't there a thing in there where they did not want us using it during the school hours? Go ahead. We can only, other other town citizens could only use it as town yeah. halls. Yeah. I don't remember. Like that. That's a good I, catch, Steve. I think that alone uh, paints the picture that the town doesn't need to take it over. I mean, if the town <laughs> residents can't can't access it freely, to me, it doesn't make sense to ask the taxpayers to to foot the bill for it. I mean, it would we make were, sense to me that about, the, what I was thinking about this is if we were going to have a charging station on that side of town, the place to put it would be at the town garage, and it would be available to all town residents. Yeah. With it being at the school and, and being isolated during uh, operating hours, the people that are going to be using it are the 
are the school employees and let the school, the supervisory union add that as a benefit to their employees. Yeah, or that we yep. somehow say that it's not restricted to, but I don't know that they, they would ever do that. They probably wouldn't do that. They probably don't want people, random people coming and parking in their parking lot. I don't know. I just, this, the, I guess my, my, my sort of thought would be why would it be much more expensive to install a new one in two years when people have, when more people have electric cars, because they will, I just know that, that more, there's going to be more um, technology that's more affordable that people are using electric cars. And so is it going to be are we shooting ourselves right now to remove something that will then cost $10,000 to put in? I don't think they're 10,000, but. How long has that one think, been there? I don't think the school would be an ideal location. Five years. If you were to install a new one, it wouldn't be a location that anybody in this meeting now would choose. Right. No. I agree uh, with it be, it was gonna be on that side of town, it would be, I mean, my thinking is it would be at the town garage. All right, so just say no. If you were a teacher at the school and you wanted to plug in your electric car, you plug it in at the town garage and walk across the field and you're at work. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. I think we say no. Fine. Yep. Motion time. Even into the contract and they didn't ask our opinion at the beginning. <laughs> no. No. I think Steve I, I made a motion, like, right? I didn't like the tone of the letter. Right. I didn't I didn't like anything about it, to tell you the truth. And I, I agree with Liz. I think they're gonna be more electric cars, and I know it's in our town plan, and I think it's something we need to we need to think about, but I think this is the wrong way to do it. I agreed. Wrong so, look. Make that motion. So I'll make that motion that we we do not uh, participate in that for the school. I'm gonna second that. Thank you, Phil. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Liz is opposed. Let that, let the minutes reflect that. Um, okay. Approving December 15th select board minutes. Motion, please. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Okay. Uh, how are you doing on orders, Dorinda? Uh, let's see. I think I got one, two. I think I've only got two so far. Yeah, yeah I know I haven't sent it yet. I, I, I haven't done it either. I, I think I did, didn't I, Dorinda? Yeah, I've got Liz who approved it and Peter. Yeah. yeah and thank so you please. for putting that number, Dorinda. Pardon? Thank you oh, for clarifying welcome. that number. I just didn't understand. It didn't have any description, and it's always there. And I'm like, what the heck does this go? Yeah, no problem. So please, uh, please yeah. do that. Is there any other uh, any other business to come before the select board this evening? No. Uh, the only thing is the correspondence about the. Oh, I'm sorry. Correspondence about the. Uh, you saw the. Um, it's all my papers are upstairs because they had to come down here. Um, over the. CLA for 2020, the common oh, level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The listers expected it was going to be a little lower, so they're surprised, but just, just going to get into the record that you guys read that and saw it. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was the good news. It is kind of good news. Yeah. 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 The last thing we need right now is another reappraisal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's going to come soon. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, well, so. I don't I don't doubt that but every year we put it off is a good year as far as I'm concerned mm, yeah anything else Sarah nope okay thank you everyone our next meeting is there uh, we be here to Randy? Hey, I just had a question and I tried to ask this when uh, Steve was in and out of uh, connectivity there but uh, one is a statement and the other is a question uh, I'd just like to thank Steve for his service as road commissioner. It's a thankless job. And I, I appreciate your efforts, Steve. So thank you. Um, here, and here. My other question was here, here. Right. Uh, the, uh, the advertisement for the position um, that you mentioned for the road commissioner, is that a paid position? Is, are we moving to, uh, 
to a, a situation where we're looking at paying somebody as a, a normal position now? Undetermined yet. Mm. That's one of the things we have. That's one of the things we have to figure out. In the in the past, as you probably know, uh, historically the road commissioner has been a member of the select board, and it's been an unpaid position. But if we end up hiring an outside person, can we really expect them to do that as a volunteer? I'd say that's a question. Thank you. So there's there's no unfortunately, and I was going to bring it up earlier, and I forgot. I apologize, but. I was I was thinking we should maybe put a little money in the budget in case in case that was a paid position, but uh, well, we've got to we've got to work our way we've got to work our way through that process. And you mentioned you mentioned that there are, there are some folks that are interested in um, that position, and I think from a from a resident standpoint, I think the one of the things you know, realizing that obviously you've got to look at qualifications and how people look at all that kind of stuff and, and what's available. Um, but as we go through this exercise, I think just if, if it comes down to looking at a uh, paid position versus non-paid position and qualifications are, are, are met and whatnot, I just, I would hope that, you know, that is part of the scoring criteria of your decision. And that's, that's what I'll say about that. That's it. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Randy? I don't understand, about, Randy. We have to. I, I, and I agree with you 100, percent Randy. I, I think we have to think about um, what we put in the ad because it's fundamentally different if we're looking for volunteers or if we plan to pay or if we're willing to look at both. Or uh, it's a little tricky how we would how we would uh, how we would do that. The good news is, uh, and I'm going to hold hold Steve to this. He's assured me that. The winter is the quiet time for the road commissioner. Uh, it's when the summer construction season starts that that the activity begins. So I'm hoping for a quiet, peaceful uh, winter and we have time to work on this. I don't anticipate we're gonna have people, uh, people lined up looking to take on this position. I think it's gonna be a challenging to, uh, to find people, but maybe not, we'll see. Oh, I hope I, I hope that we've got you know people within the town that are willing to step up and and that are that are able to fill that position. You know, one of my concerns as a resident is just the the continual creep within the budgets year after year after year. And when you start talking about paid positions, um, you know, that dramatically increases the budget. You know, and I don't know what kind of you know hours you would be looking for in a position like that or whatever but you know when you start talking about staffing wages and and you know all the fringe that goes along with it and everything you know my first thought as a as a resident is that's going to impact the the overall budget you know um we're already looking at other paid positions within uh within the town organization and and um so anyway that's that's where my question was coming from peter no, Randy, we believe me, we get it. I mean, first of all, you know, it's it's unclear, and uh, you know, we've got some work to do with with Steve to pin him down and see how much see how much actual actual time time it takes. Uh, certainly, it's not a full time position, whatever it is. It, it's a part time. It's a part time position. But you're absolutely right. Even if it's a if it's a half-time position or third-time position and it's paid, it's still real money. So the money's got to come from somewhere and we know where it's going to come from or have to come from. So, uh, yes, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a challenge. It's hey, a challenge. Peter. Yes, Vic. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, to Steve, I uh, appreciate, uh, you being the road commissioner and, uh, I, I, um, how, how respectful job you've done. Uh, and uh, thank you. And in addition, I wanted to uh, thank Peter and uh, and Steve uh, in the interim uh, since Paul got done. I, I think uh, 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 Files and uh, Bruce and Charles have really stepped up to the plate. And I got to say, uh, uh, the roads have uh, really looked good uh, so far this winter. And uh, hopefully uh, with Shane coming on board, uh, we'll start a new era.
There you go. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. I want to add my uh, thanks to uh, Steve as well. I mean, you've done a great job for us. And yes, thank you, Steve. We're really, really sad that you have to step down because we wanted you to be our road manager for the foreseeable future. Well, the, the good news is, the good news is, um, you know, we've got we've got elections coming up. So who knows what happens after the election? Steve and I could both be gone. Who knows? But <laughs> oh God, don't probably, say that. Probably don't not the that. Case. Um, Steve is certainly going to be, you know, hopefully still be on the select board and still be involved in this in this road stuff. I mean, I I consider myself to be a pretty good manager, but I am not a road expert by any stretch. So uh, when I have uh, decisions to make in situations that come up, I'm going to be I'm going to be calling on him. So we just, have to, we just have to see how it goes. Randy, I, yep. I appreciate your your concerns. It always seems like. Uh, it always seems like there's some kind of bracket creep in the in the in the town budget every year. And uh, believe me, I think all of us on the board and and also the folks serving on the budget committee are very cognizant of that. At the same time, it seems like there's additional stuff to do every year and more work and more challenges every year. I mean, the road commissioner thing used to be a very uh, a very simple thing. It's more complex than it used to be with all the new rules and regulations and everything else. So yep. we're trying to manage it the best we can. And uh, we appreciate your input. Thank you. So with that, uh, look at this seven o'clock, just, about, hey. just about perfect timing. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah. Bye. Bye.